Good morning, and welcome to St. John the Baptist Cathedral Basilica Parish. We welcome all of you present and those joining us through live stream. At this time, if you take a few moments to silence your phones. Our presider this morning is Father Cecil Critch, and our gathering chant can be found in the Catholic Book of Worship, number 650, This Day God Gives Me. Please stand. <clears throat> Son and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Morning. Morning, Father. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries today, let us acknowledge our sins and ask the Lord for forgiveness for today. mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that always pondering spiritual things, we may carry out in both word and deed that which is pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever.
A reading from the first book of Samuel. When the armies were coming home, when David returned from killing the Philistine, the women came out of all the towns of Israel singing and dancing to meet King Saul with tambourines, with songs of joy, and with musical instruments. And the women sang to one another as they made merry, Saul has killed his thousands, and David his ten thousands. Saul was very angry, for this saying displeased him. He said, They have ascribed to David ten thousands, and to me they have ascribed thousands. What more can he have but the kingdom? So Saul eyed David from that day on. Saul spoke with his son Jonathan and with all his servants about killing David. But Saul's son Jonathan took great delight in David. Jonathan told David, My father Saul is trying to kill you, therefore be on your guard tomorrow morning. Stay in a secret place and hide yourself. I will go out and stand beside my father in the field where you are, and I will speak to my father about you. If I learn anything, I will tell you. Jonathan spoke well of David to his father Saul, saying to him, The king should not sin against his servant David, because he has not sinned against you, and because his deeds have been of good service to you. For he took his life in his hands when he attacked the Philistine, and the Lord brought about a great victory for all of Israel. You saw it and rejoiced. Why then will you sin against an innocent person by killing David without cause? Saul heeded the voice of Jonathan. Saul swore, as the Lord lives, he shall not be put to death. So Jonathan called David and related all these things to him. Jonathan then brought David to Saul, and he was in his presence as before. The word of the Lord. The response to the psalm, in you, Lord, I have found my peace, I have found my peace. in the Lord. 
destroyed death and brought life immortal through the gospel. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus departed from his disciples to the sea, and a great multitude from Galilee followed him, hearing all that he was doing. They came to him in great numbers, from Judea, Jerusalem, Adumea, beyond the Jordan, and the region around Tyre and Sidon. Jesus told his disciples to have a boat ready for him because of the crowd, so that they would not crush him, for he had cured many so that all who were had diseases pressed upon him to touch him. Whenever the unclean spirits saw Jesus, they fell down before him and shouted, You are the Son of God. But he sternly ordered them not to make him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> this morning's first reading paints a very vivid picture of the destructive power of jealousy and envy. Saul, the king of David, grew jealous of David's popularity and military success. Even though David wanted to serve Saul, Saul saw David as a competitor and a threat and wanted to kill him. Jealousy clouded Saul's judgment and made him see David as a way, in a way that wasn't true to the kind of person David was. It was Jonathan, fortunately, Saul's son and David's friend who helped Saul to see David differently. On this occasion, at least Saul was receptive to Jonathan's more insightful judgment of David. Jonathan helped his father to see more clearly, he helped him heal him of his blindness. This is only temporary, as we'll read in the next days. Jealousy and envy are destructive forces. And in the beginning of today's gospel reading, Jesus, we see the same, almost the same thing happening here in the gospel. Jesus withdraws with his disciples to the Sea of Galilee, had just experienced hostility and jealousy and envy from the religious leaders of his time. In fact, Mark had just told us that because Jesus had healed a man with a withered hand on the Sabbath in the synagogue, the Pharisees were conspiring with others like the Herodians against him with a view to destroying him. So Jesus withdraws from that hostility with his disciples up to the Sea of Galilee. Today's Gospel reading declares that great numbers who had heard about Jesus' healing ministry came to him by the lakeside. Because he cured so many, all who were afflicted in any way were crowding forward to touch him. We are given a sense of Jesus being constantly surrounded by the broken and the afflicted. Indeed, according to the reading, Jesus was in danger of being crushed by them because they were so desperate to be healed. Yet the Gospels never suggest that Jesus ever tired of this healing ministry. Even when he took his disciples away to a lonely place for some quiet time, he still had compassion for the broken and bruised crowd who unexpectedly showed up on his arrival. He once referred to himself as like a doctor who attended the sick. He came to bring Jesus, God's healing and merciful love to those who were broken, not just in body, but also in mind and in spirit. Jesus didn't tire of those who needed his healing power and that poured out from him. The risen Lord today does not tire of us either when we approach him in our physical, mental, or spiritual brokenness in need of healing. Just as Jesus drew people to himself from all over, according to the Gospel reading, the risen Lord Jesus continues to draw all people to himself. The risen Lord continues to stand by all who turn towards him and our need, regardless of where we are on our life's journey, what we may have done, what we have failed to do in the past. Like the crowds in the gospel, we reach out to touch the Lord in our brokenness, recognizing him as the source of our healing and life. The Lord is as available to us as he was to the crowds of Galilee. He remains strength in our weakness and healing in our brokenness life in our various experiences of death. One of the privileged ways we touch the Lord Jesus every day is in the Eucharist, which has been aptly described as broken bread 
for a broken people. Our prayers of intercession today. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis and Peter, our Archbishop, and for all those who lead and serve the people of God, the Church in our world, we pray to the Lord. We continue to pray for peace in the troubled spots of the world, in Israel and Palestine area, certainly in Ukraine and in Sudan and other areas of conflict. We pray for peace. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the healing power of the Holy Spirit upon all those sick, recommended to our prayers or recovering from illness or enduring treatments for cancer and other diseases. For Christopher Anthony, Faith Nuna, Father John Aaron, Sister Margie Taylor, Derek Bragg, and Chelsea Coombs. For all those who have asked for our prayers, we pray to the Lord. For all the souls that have been faithfully departed, for Matthew Prim, Father Pat Power and his parents, Tim and Julia, Madison Fleming, and Sister Agnes Hutchings, whose funeral is tomorrow. For these and all those who have died in the peace of the Lord Jesus, we pray to the Lord. And we bring to the Lord your own prayers today in the quiet of your hearts. We pray to the Lord. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the graces and blessings you give us every day. And we make our prayer always in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Savior who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest a resurrection. So with all the angels and saints, we, say, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. <laughs> Oh, 
by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Peter our Bishop, the clergy, and all your people. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. John the Baptist, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <coughs> Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. to our Heavenly Father in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our <coughs> Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ has said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We share the peace of Christ now with one another. It's with you.
God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I'm not I am worthy, worthy that you should enter you. under my roof, but only, but only say, the say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn can be found in the Catholic Book of Worship, 597, Bread of Life. <clears throat> Let us pray. 
Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we may experience the effects of the salvation which is pledged to us by these mysteries, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless all of us in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God. Have a good day. You too, Father. Our missioning hymn can be found in the Catholic Book of Worship, number 644. O God, our help in ages past. 644. <clears throat>